So here we still approach the problem as if we would any regular problem, right? So here the angle of reference that we're trying to find is this x. And just like every other problem, the, ang the side that is across or the side that's opposite of my angle of reference is my opposite angle. I should always be able to identify the hypotenuse and then the angle that's right next to the angle of reference that's not the hypotenuse is my adjacent side. And so I'm gonna circle the two sides that I have information for, which in this case is the opposite and the hypotenuse. So I'm trying to figure out which function, which trick function has both opposite and hypotenuse in it, which is uh, sine. And, and so that's what's gonna start me off, right? So here I have sine of x is equal to the opposite, which is 15, over the hypotenuse, which is 24. Now here, yes, I can simplify, but in this case, since I'm putting a calculator, there's no need to, a calculator would take care of that for me, right? And so here, because I want the angle, I want the, in the angle of reference, I have to cancel this uh, sine, right? And so that's where I'm gonna bring sine inverse, or arc sine, um, sine inverse of sine of x, is equal to, and remember, what we do to one side, we must do to the other side. So what we've done here is we brought the sine inverse. So we gotta bring the sine inverse to the right side as well. And on the left side, the sine inverse and the sine cancel, and I'm left with x equals whatever sine inverse of 15 over 24. Let's figure that out. So 15, and I'm gonna type it in exactly how I see it now. Here I'm using a Desmos ca uh, scientific calculator. And, and if you notice, we have our trig function down here, but we don't have the inverse. So if you actually select function, <clears throat> your function key, uh, we have more options, right? And, and so here's where we have sine inverse. So I select sine inverse, go to back to main, and I, I'm gonna type in 15 over 24 exactly how I see it. So 15 divided by 24, oh, 24, hit enter, and that's telling me that my my angle of reference is approximately 38.7 degrees. So here, x is 38.7 degrees. So looking at the second problem, once again, we I start by identifying our angle of reference. So in this case, that's the angle that I need to be looking for. The side that's gonna be across from it, I'm gonna label as my opposite side. I should always find the hypotenuse because that's across your 90 degree angle. That's your longest side of the triangle. And the angle that's right next to it is what we call the adjacent angle. And once again, I'm gonna circle the two sides that I have information for, which in this case is the adjacent and the hypotenuse, and I'm trying to figure out which trig function has both adjacent and hypotenuse in it, and that is my cosine function. And so that's a function that I'm gonna start with. So I start with cosine theta, or in, sorry, in this case it's cosine x. Cosine x, is that's my angle of reference, is equal to the adjacent side, which is eight, over the hypotenuse side, which is 11. And so that's what I'm gonna start with. And, and so I'm trying to look for my angle of reference, right? So I, in other words, I gotta cancel this cosine. And what cancels a cosine? Well, it's, it's inverse. And so we start off cosine inverse of x is equal to, so what we did here is we added the function, or in this case, we're gonna multiply by the function cosine inverse. And so what we do to one side, we must do to the opposite side. And so the opposite side is cosine inverse of whatever eight over 11 is. And the cosine inverse and the x cancel, I'm left with x equals, on the right side, I'm gonna put cosine inverse of eight over 11, and that's gonna give me. So here's my calculator. And uh, same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and clear this all. I'm gonna go to functions, and then this time I want cosine inverse, and I'm gonna put eight divided by 11, and that gives me 43.3 degrees. So in this case, my angle of reference was 43.3 degrees. Looking at this last function, once again, everything is the same. First is identify the angle of reference, which in this case, that's the angle that I'm looking for. The side that is across your angle of reference is the opposite side. We should always be able to identify the hypotenuse side that's across your 90 or that's your longest side. And the one, the side next to your angle of reference is your adjacent side. And once again, I'm gonna circle the information I have. So in this case, I have 
opposite and I have adjacent. So which function has both opposite and adjacent, and that's tan. And so that's the function that I'm starting with. So we have tan of my angle of reference, which in this case is x, is equal to the opposite, which is 20, over the adjacent, which is 37. And so that's the function I'm starting with. And notice how, once again, I'm looking for my angle of reference. I'm looking for the x, right? So somehow, I got to cancel that tan. And so what cancels a tan is the tan inverse. So we have tan inverse of tan of x. And what we do to one side, which is we brought the inverse in, we must do to the opposite side, which is bring the tan inverse. And so here we would put tan inverse of 37 over 30. And once again, the tan inverse and the tan cancel, and I'm left with x. And on the right side, I'm going to put tan inverse of 20 over 37 into my calculator. So here's my calculator. And again, I'm using a Desmos scientific calculator. And I'm going to go to functions. And notice how I am in degrees. I do not want to be in radians. Even if I click it, notice how the, the answer changes or updates, right? So right, make sure we're in degrees. Um, and I'm going to type in tan inverse of 20 divided by 37. Hit enter. And we get an angle measurement of 28.4. So we, here we get x equals 28.4 degrees.